Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hardy New York Show. I tell you, today is, uh, I'm going to do a little, a few things different today. Okay, most of the time I have uh, people on that we talk uh, spiritual. Okay, we talk about what's going on in their lives. And, and uh, today we're going to be talking about not only spiritual, but physical. Okay, this is going to be more of a class than a regular show, but you, you're going to find this absolutely fascinating. So right now, if you don't have a pad and a paper, you want to take notes on this show because it could be life-changing. Did you hear me? I said it could be life-changing to some people out there that are suffering, absolutely suffering, and you don't have to. Just take, a, just take some time and learn about things that you could put in your body that will help it heal itself. Okay, as Jack LaLanne once said, he would not put sugar in his gas tank in his car. So why? Why do we load ourselves up? Why have I done it for years? And I'm finally getting the light bulb turned on to stop doing this. Because it slowly, it slowly takes our life out of us. So today, Tony Jean, it's a privilege and a really special honor to have you on today. I read your book, and I don't go from start to finish on too many books. But yours I did, and it was fascinating, and it was, it, it, it was it, how do I explain it? Easy to read, but not, it, not simple but easy to read and knowing the steps that you got to take. So I want to turn this over to Tony Jean for a little while, and I'll tell you why. I want her to let you know how this all started because everyone comes to a point in their life where they're saying enough is enough. So welcome, Tony Jean. Thank you so much. It is my honor to be here. And it's a pleasure to have you <laughs> on, and I want to... Uh, Kind of give a personal testimony. Absolutely. Would you do that? I and, would and love to. Listen carefully. <laughs> well, I started this journey about 11 years ago, and I learned the message of health the hard way. So I might have a book and, and, and a title, but I believe your greatest credential is your own personal walk and journey. And my personal walk and journey started out at about 16 years old when I discovered that I had a weight issue, and I began every dietary fad that I could possibly find. Um, and I actually started about that age. I was very young and I caused a lot of havoc on my, on my immune system. I was about 16 years old and I remember going on my first diet and that was the, when the fat-free craze started to uh, come around the globe. And I started eating all these fat-free foods and I didn't realize that um, they were more high in, in, in chemicals and sugar than anything else. And I started losing bone mass. And um, as I approached my 20s, I started developing panic attacks and mood swings and irritability and severe digestive disorders. So I really did learn the message of health the hard way. Mm -hmm. um, and as I approached my later 20s, um, and I worked as a hair colorist, I owned my own beauty salon. Oh boy, my yeah. wife Angela would love to know more about that. <laughs> well, I um, was breathing in a lot of caustic chemicals. Really? And because um, I color. did a lot of color. Mm -hmm. And um, but I had a successful business. But I took my dietary theories along with me. And unfortunately, um, my body just grew sicker and weaker. And um, I had lost and gained probably 200 pounds altogether in, in, by losing and gaining and losing and gaining what I would call yo-yo dieting. What? And then back and forth and back and back forth. forth. Yo-yo. So in other words, I would gain it all back because when you're following fads and not what God tells us to do, right. you, you know, your body is not going to be in balance. And my body wasn't in balance. So you're starting so, to feel this now. I'm starting to feel the ramifications of the yo-yo dieting. Okay. So losing and gaining 30, and 30, 30 or 40 pounds repeatedly to gain it all back and then do it all again. Starvation diets, um, you know, yo-yo dieting, you just go up and, up and down and up and down. Um, my body was like a jail cell, it was like a prison because I felt like I was trapped inside of it. And Anybody can identify with that out there? 
Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I just continued this lifestyle into my 30s. Mm -hmm. And I had no, uh, thyroid nodules, my um, blood sugar, you know, my blood glucose, the intolerance was just causing me to have migraines all the time. My, like, four to five times a week, I would have serious migraine headaches. Migraines? Migraines, which are horrific if anybody has ever had a migraine. Really? It's terrible. Um, y the only thing you can do is lay down and, and sleep and try to mm. sleep it off. And this was several times a week. And I would use a lot of artificial sweeteners and I, I was really poisoning my body. But my main goal was to lose weight, not really thinking about the havoc I was causing on my skeletal structure. I had a lot of bone loss. And How long would it take you to lose 30 pounds? Uh, Which I, I, I'm embarrassed to admit that, but back then, probably six weeks. I mean, 30 I, pounds. because I would, I would starve myself, I would binge, I would do a lot of, I, d I did a number on myself back then. Bleeding. And then, the whole nine yards. Whole nine, okay. The whole nine yards. And I was working as a colorist, and I had a great business, a great salon, I had a great rapport of people, and, but I never felt well because of this right. lifestyle. Wow. And, um, I had a little bit of information, um, in reference to nutrition. Um, that I would kind of go back to, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't what I knew in my heart somewhere that was going to lead me, you know, to what the answers were that healed me. Now, up, up until this point, did you, did you uh, believe in God? I always believed in God. From you always 11 did. years old, I got saved. I came from a Christian family. That, yeah, 11 years old, that's when she got saved, and what that means is she gave her heart and life to to the Lord. Amen. Okay, but that doesn't mean things are perfect because you were going up and down the scale. Boom, it boom, doesn't boom, mean boom, things boom. are perfect. Okay, so here you that. are, uh, uh, loving God, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's causing all this other stuff? Well, we listen to the world. We, 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 we basically, we listen to the, you know, what we hear in, in, in the media, what mm -hmm. we hear um, on the news, that one week you hear this one food is going to cure everything, and then the following week you hear that same food is going to kill you, because we took God out of the equation, and that's really where I'm, I'm going with this story. We took God out of everything, and so when I say I learned the message of health the hard way, I may have credentials now, but back then, that was the beginning of my greatest credentials because it became my personal testimony mm. how I went from very sick to extraordinary healthy but how I did that was when I finally approached my 30s and I reached a point where I was I've had so many different uh, ailments going on but then one day at the age of 37 I discovered that I had an eight centimeter mass in my left kidney and this was mm -hmm. the icing on the cake for me and it turned out to be a malignant tumor renal cell carcinoma in its second stage which is, which is kidney cancer and it was a direct result right. of my lifestyle uh, which is the yo-yo dieting, the losing and gaining a tremendous amount of weight, the blood sugar issues, the thyroid nodules, the panic attacks, the mood swings, the digestive issues were rampant um, and, and I, you know, was cancer. And that really scared me. That made me really wake up. And were you married at this time? I was married at the time. So okay. my, you can imagine my husband and my mom. Right. They were devastated. Um, but I am going to say this. I, as fearful as I was, and I'm going to admit, I am human and I was scared. I mean, I am in my own flesh here. I remember just calling out to the Lord and, and asking him to show me a way, Lord, because I know there is a better way out there. I know that there is a better way than just going the medical route. But I was... So were you looking at that time for a better way? Or were you looking at that time to just get the cancer gone? Well, more than that. And yet, that's a great question, Peter, because I, my mom, who was very, very scared, because mm -hmm. here I am, her daughter... You know, sure. as a parent, you know, a parent can re relate to that. And my husband, they looked like they were dying before my eyes out of the fear of what I was going through. Right. And um, they really wanted me to opt for the having the surgery. And I have to admit, I did. I had my left kidney removed. And um, the doctors did say it was all encapsulated, which meant it wasn't anywhere else. And so that was a good prognosis. However... When I came home, I remember being scared still because here I just lost a vital organ. Right. And I, even though the doctors gave me a good prognosis of it never coming back, or rather it 95% chance of it never coming back, um, but they wanted to keep me in scans to keep watching in case it does come back. But I asked the Lord for more. I said, Lord, I know that you can give me more. Being a believer, um, I called out to the Lord and I said, you know, I said, Lord, please show me another way. I know that I know that I know in my spirit but what, that there is a what, better way. What, what caused you to just to cry out to the Lord out of nowhere? Was it, uh, were you in church? 
I wasn't in church. I was actually sitting you in the back of my hair salon. All of a sudden, the light went off and said, wait a minute, I'm going to cry out to God. Amen. The light went out in my heart. Okay. <laughs> and I cried out to the Lord, just being a believer, basically. I already was a believer, so it wasn't new information to me. Right. And the Lord came to me, and he spoke to my heart very what clearly. What? And he said to me, go to Scripture, go to Scripture. And I heard that still small voice, but very clearly. Because we need to silence out everything else. Mm -hmm. The doctors, my mom, my husband, whoever was fearful. You know, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He gave us love. He gave us power and a sound mind. And Amen. the peace that he gave me surpasses all understanding. And he said, I want you to go to scripture. Because I still had all the other health conditions I was suffering from. I knew like what? Oh, the panic attacks, the mood swings, the irritability, the bone migraine. loss, the headache, the migraines. Were, you know, just by removing an organ doesn't, right. doesn't take away the, the cause of why you're sick. Okay. And what I did was I, I went to scripture. And I'm going to say... I reluctantly went to scripture because I didn't know that the Bible would be a manual on how to heal my body, but I had peace about it. I knew that that command was given to mm -hmm. me by a loving God, and I went to scripture, and I opened up every concordant of the Bible that pertained to food and healing. And I have to say, I was amazed at what I found. The same exact foods that we villainize today, like raw dairy. But what did you do? You went to the Bible, you looked in the back, and you, and you looked for how to eat, right? Uh, no. Well, how did you it find all this there. stuff? I mean, uh, I literally picked up the book and I right. just flipped over the pages and wow, raw honey, wow, you know, berries, pomegranates, dates, figs. I mean, these are the fruit was the first food in the Garden of Eden. Right. Praise God, and Thanks. and I, I and and you know herbal extracts and, and you know herbal infusions and the, I was Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14 explained what to eat and what not to eat and what was clean and what was unclean and I have to say I was really blown away by what I was discovering mm -hmm. that I never really even learned in church. so I began implementing the principles that were stated clearly in Scripture right and I have to say my body began to heal right from the very start. My panic attacks and mood swings began to go away. When you mean from the start, you mean a day, two well, days, a week? It's funny because the, everybody detoxes or heals at a different pace because we're all different. But when I say that I began to heal from the very start, it took me about two weeks. You've got to remember, I also was never on any prescription drugs. I didn't have any chemotherapy. So I nothing? Did nothing. So I did have that on my side. Um, however, my body obviously was toxic because I was breathing in a lot of chemicals as a hair colorist. There were so actually after, you, after you had the operation, you, you're still back doing the hair? I wanted to stop doing hair because of what I had discovered. My, right. There were traces of hair dye in my kidney that were creating the malignant tumor that um, How you know, get would find. How did it get well, how did it get there? Because I was breathing it in all the time. I owned a hair salon, and I was, you know, working as a color expert. And those chemicals were actually located in the malignant tumor of the cancer. You're going to freak cancer. out everybody that has a hair salon. Well, that's why we need to bring God back in the equation and go back to more natural, what God provided. And, you know, there was always hair color for, you know, hundreds of years, but we used herbs, and, and there are organic color lines out there. So although I changed my profession, and I'm going to get to that in a moment, uh, uh -huh. when I started implementing the principles in Scripture, um, like fresh raw juices and raw dairy and eating a lot of fruit, believe it or not, fruit is the medicinal glucose fuel that runs the body. The body runs on glucose. It's not the same sugar as sugar in the sugar bowl. I, my body started to repair right from the very start. And my, I, I would say a good two to four weeks, I did go through detox where my headaches got worse and I had insomnia, I was tired more. Um, so your body has to go through detox. We don't just heal without going through the withdrawal right. process. Right. You know, I was 37, 38 years old, so I, was, I had 38 years of history of, you know, pesticides and, and you know, vaccinations, whatever things that Im compromise me, my immune system. You know, mm -hmm. we don't just get sick overnight. Did you and drink a lot of water? I began drinking a lot of water. Water is, thank you for saying that, the, the basis of all life. It's very important to export the toxins out of my body. What kind of water? You want to use spring water. Spring, spring water. Spring water is the best. Is Poland the best. spring? Well, the plastic is not good, but I mean, if you were to use now Poland spring, it's not a terrible plastic. thing. But, um, but the bottom line is that my body started to heal right from the start. I had bleeding gums. They went away. My migraines, I'd go two weeks without one. I'd go a month without one. I went six months without one. My body just started getting better and better. And my bone structure, my skeletal structure that I had lost so much bone mass, actually started to repair the bone mineral density through eating what God created for food. 
foods in the form in which you know God provided, which meant no pesticides, organically grown, no genetic mutations, um, you know, no hormones, no antibiotics, and no refined sugar. I was eating raw honey. Honey is mentioned in the Bible at least 50 times. Wow. And it was just amazing. And I was so on fire for God, what he was doing in my life. And then he spoke to my heart again and he said that I want you to share this message with the world and I want you to go to school and I did and I took everything I can take in reference to biblical healing and you know whatever degrees and certifications I needed because mm -hmm. I couldn't wait to share the message with the world but when God gives you a command to do something do it because you might think that your life is going in one direction but God always has a better plan so he turned my, my darkness into light and, and I love the scripture Genesis 50 20 you intended to harm me but God turned it around for his glory and what is being done now is the savings of many lives so I do say that my own personal journey from going from very sick near death to extraordinarily healthy and staying this way. I always maintain a healthy weight. When I tell people that I had a weight issue and a major one, they look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, Are you? Because I maintain my weight all the time. And it's not about deprivation and restriction. It's about abundance because God wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. So I had to go through a very dark time and I know many people are, but I have the opportunity now as a holistic practitioner to see people healed from various health conditions. I see cancer reversed, I see lupus, I see heart disease, chronic skin conditions, digestive disorders. I know that when I work with patients now as a holistic practitioner that God blessed me to be, that my journey was so worth it. It was so worth it to go from that you know, dark time in my life of sickness because I knew that God had something greater for me. So you have seen people cured of cancer just by eating right just by changing our diet and it's more than just by eating right we have to first and foremost we, we have to believe that God you know is has to we have to put God back in the equation I think sure. that you know we were created in God's image not man's image why are we listening to man doctors are wonderful people I'm not putting them down by no means they'll save your life they're great at emergency care but there's no health care in the system why because we took God out of the equation. That's right. And we need to bring him back in. We need to go back to scripture mm -hmm. on how to take care of these temples. In Romans 12, 1, it says, I urge you, brethren, to present your physical body as a living sacrifice. Taking care of our bodies is our reasonable act of worship. We minister with our health. So you said, I've heard too many times the word, she's lost her battle or he put up a good fight. Yes. You've heard that too many times. Yes. So that means they... They went to the pearly gates, hopefully. You said it. Right. They, they battled so much with their, with their you know, medical treatments, reoccur you know, repeated surgeries. Or, mm -hmm. or, and when doctors say, you know, we got it all, but you didn't get the reason why the person got the cancer in the first place or got the abnormality or whatever it may be in the first place. You right. know, we, we, we have to go back to why we're sick and, and, you know, why are we having these health issues? What's going on? You know, what is the root cause? What is the source of our food? So to keep seeing people battling and fighting and just keep battling and, you know, that's really sad. We, we have to understand what's causing, you know, the reason that we're sick in the first place. We're supposed to be building. We're not supposed to be battling. We're supposed to be building wellness in our bodies. So let me ask you, why, why exactly what is disease and how do we avoid it? Disease is a disconnection of ease or a, a lack of ease in the body, disease. And that's what happens when we eat pest, you know, pesticide-laden, hormone-laden, uh, reduced fat, f um, you know, foods that have chemicals. Uh, and and when, we, when we actually start incorporating principles stated in cl clearly in scripture, the body gets back into balance and ease. Just listen to the word ease. It sounds so calming. It sounds so, you know, b in balance. And our bodies begin to repair. That's exactly what happens. What's the greatest story you ever saw? I oh, mean, uh, yeah. what, what was the worst case scenario that someone that was crawling in? Yeah, well, um, I, I, there are many, but specifically, uh, um, there, there's so many it's really hard to choose from. Right. But I will say, I, I have a, a, a patient, her name is Nicole, and she, um, she's six years now, lupus-free. 
And I'll briefly lupus free. Lupus free. Wow. They, medical, in the medical profession, they say there's no cure for lupus. And I am going to say that is correct because the cures are not found in medical science, they're found in scripture. And um, when she came to me, she was diagnosed with lupus, and her doctor, her hematologist, to be specific, kept running her, her lab work over and over and over because after she was under my care, and I give God all the glory, I am the facilitator, people heal themselves through this program. Um, hmm. She started implementing these principles, and you know her blood work hmm. kept coming back normal. So, uh, when you're saying she implemented these principles, you're saying that she got on this diet, the the Bible. Let's call it biblical, the Bible, biblical, yes. the Bible diet. Correct. She got on the Bible. How about up here? Yes. Did she get more into the Word also? Yes. Did she like study and, and because we can actually feed ourselves by studying and speaking the word. Amen. Now, that's right. Are you recommending that also? Definitely. Uh, m my program, I pray with my patients. I actually pray with there them. You go. Uh, Nicole there was you go. not saved and she's saved now. She wasn't so saved. The she one did with the sinner's prayer. Lupus. Yes. And so you just brought up a, a great topic. Right. Um, we could eat the best foods on the planet. We really could. We could juice every day and eat everything organically grown, live on a farm if you would, and you know, have unforgiveness and anger, and, and that's like drinking poison and, and not believe in God, and not believe that there is someone greater than ourselves, and, and not understand that you know, God is the foundation of the healing, mm -hmm. not just the foods we're eating. That is more important that's here. Very it's everything, important. actually, because once important. again, I repeat, we could eat the best foods on the planet, but if we don't have that spiritual connection, God is the one that helped me embark on this journey and get me to where I am. I'm telling He's you, I heard that uh, unforgiveness and resentment is one of the causes of arthritis. Correct. You've heard that too? Absolutely. It's, it's like drinking poison, like I said. It's because there's spiritual roots to disease. There, there, you know, anger, unforgiveness, it's, it's, it calcifies in your joints, so you're going to be stiff. Can you're you, not going to feel like, good. Can, can you picture that? Can you picture <laughs> how anger and resentment is calcifying in your joints? Yeah. And it just like, uh, uh, but but how can that be reversed? How can, how can you get the inflammation out, the calcium that is built up? We already know that with with, with up here, yes. we go into the Word of God because Amen. you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Okay, so we that will happen. Okay, but ha all right now now we got let's say the lupus lady, she's cured. Okay, she's on. The biblical Bible diet, okay, she's renewing her mind by studying the Word of God every day. Amen. Yes. Okay, now let's take, for instance, how can you tell someone out there that that has severe arthritis, severe calcium buildup, how can that be reversed? Yes, well, there's, there's numerous things that we can do. Um, first and foremost, juicing. Juicing is something that actually rapidly transform, trans, um, actually removes the toxins from the body that are calcifying in our joints mm -hmm. and then it actually you know brings the nutrients into the cells it cleans so it out it cleans it out because the reason the, the key to juicing right. is there's no fiber there fiber is really good for us but there's a time of the day where we need to relax our inner organs so they're oh. not working so that you kind of give them a, a rest but but you're going to receive the nutrients from the juicing because right. when you're juicing you're pressing the juice from the plant correct right. you're not blending it all together and a blender shake or a smoothie is great, but once again, I repeat, we need to give our organs a rest. So you're getting a rapid delivery of life force nutrients, kind of like an IV, right into your cells. And then you're exporting toxins out of the body. So we're actually then, the person's actually getting the calcium, it's like leaving the body? The calcification is actually leaving the body, but it's not just a one-time deal. We have to, first of all, we have to be consistent not inconsistent, mm -hmm. you have to do it every day. And, and you know, we have to continue to do it. Once we get well, we have to also maintain our health. So juicing every too. day, what, I mean, juicing, you gotta get bags and bags and you bags. Really Everybody don't. out there knows it, bags and bags. And then <laughs> there, there, this much, <laughs> this much vegetables into one glass like this. And that's not necessarily true because the, the thing is, is that juicing, yeah. there's so much misconceptions about juicing out What's there. What's the easiest way? The to, easiest way is to get yourself a good juicer, like a Breville or a Jacqueline. You don't have to spend a fortune. Right. And you can juice like two cucumbers and some celery. And that's it. And that's it. And get 16 to 20 ounces of juice. And it not only tastes good, it's refreshing, but you don't need to spend a fortune. You and don't it doesn't need take to an hour to clean 
clean it and after it using. Take, Peter, I juice every day, me personally. And, and you don't spend an hour cleaning minutes. the juicer. Every five minutes is with the juicer being cleaned. And the juice drank. I kid you not. That's wow. every day. That's every day. And then I have some patients that are chronically ill, so they need to juice a little bit more in the day. Right. Although, even when you're healthy, you can juice several times a day because it, you know, it's healing. It what do you mean chronically really ill? Chronically ill, I may have, like, I, I do get a lot of patients that are sent home to die with um, advanced cancers. Wow. And, and it's, it's, it's sad. It's, right. it's not easy to do what I do. When you, when you get people in that situation, they've had numerous surgeries and they've had different types of chemotherapy and radiation, experimental, and literally sent home to die. And what I have to say is that they come back to life. But So that would be the most chronically ill that I've experienced in terms of working with someone. When you send someone home that's chronically ill, um, how many juices do they have to have a day? So th they can have up to 13 juices a day. 13. 13 juices. To, to really, because we don't want an outside source to remove the tumor or to get rid of the abnormality in the body. You want the, your own immune system to do it. We have kill, killer T cells. Your, your, your immune system is your first line of defense against disease or an invader. And so juicing 13 times a day, eight ounce juices. Wow, that's yes, a lot. It, it sounds like a lot, but when a person is that chronic, chronically ill right. and they have a family and they have a life and they have a, 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 a reason to live or a will to live, then they'll do it. Um, but that's not something that they would stay on. They wouldn't have to stay on it that many times a day. However, they can do anywhere from one to three juices a day as they're getting better, and then they can go down to one juice a day as well, a maintenance. What's the most powerful juice? The most powerful the juice. How were you going to get it? You, you, got, you got it all. Yeah. You got the antioxidants. You got the cleansing. You got what, what's the most powerful one? If, the, if someone needed to have that one drink uh, however many times a day, what would that be? Celery juice. Straight, S straight celery juice. 16 ounces. Celery juice. Just celery. Just celery. How about eating it? So that's another great question. Um, eating it, now we just, you know, you have fiber now, and now you have to work to break it down. And you want to be able to have that rapid delivery of the juice right into the cells. When you eat it, you actually have to metabolize it and, and digest it, whereas the juice, you don't have to digest it. So you're, what you're telling me is the most powerful one, is celery Isn't juice. Isn't it amazing? Something well, well, so how simple. Is that? How is that? Because it has mineral salts, and the mineral salts actually retard the growth of the pathogens and the viruses that led to the cancer or whatever it is that the person is trying to fight. So the celery, celery juice. Straight celery. So I'm telling you, this has been so informative. I'm, I got great news for you because we're going to have three segments. We're just finishing the first. We're going to have two more so stay tuned and watch us because after you see this one we'll have another one and then we got a surprise for you for the third show okay the genesis of how this all started and uh it's been a pleasure it's been my Tony pleasure G, thank you so much i'm looking mm -hmm. forward to our next one we're going to get more into uh, your book and also your story and what the word of god says about it Please come back. Please listen. Please take notes. You will not be disappointed. This could be life-saving to many people, either spiritual, physical, or mentally. One of them you're going to get, hopefully. But if you get all three, which God wants you to have all three, you're going to live the life he wants you to live. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.